All right, what's going on, guys? So this week, I want to bring you a special July 4th stock pick of the week. So instead of doing one company, I'm going to talk about three companies today. And all of these companies are focusing most of their production and most of their marketing in the U.S. So these are technically U.S. cannabis companies, but they're trading on the Canadian Stock Exchange. This company here, Cannabis One, um, you know, they are focused mainly on the Northwest. So they're focused in Colorado, Washington, and Oregon, um, up in this area. And they're looking to expand into Canada as well. Um, so they're currently operating in three U.S. states, and they will be looking to expand into all of these states here. As you can see, more than a dozen other U.S. states, along with every province and territory in Canada. This they hope to be done by 2019-2020. Uh, so Cannabis One is a fully integrated company from seed to sale. So they have cultivation facilities in Colorado and they are producing a majority of the products they're selling, but they're obviously not able to meet the demand. So they have uh, other retailers which they're selling through. As you can see this here, this is one of their retail shops called The Joint. So this is their style uh, or branding, as you can see. It's very hip, kind of like, call it like retro almost, maybe 1960s, 1970s kind of diner kind of style look. Um, it's definitely old, old fashioned look, trying to um, almost that got that reefer madness kind of look to it. So they have all of these products here as you can see concentrates edibles topicals hardware all of the strains they have are here um they have connection or at least some supply agreements with all of the brands you see here so i saw harvest harvest one so like keith um boulder colorado so these are all edible or um growing companies raw is obviously a rolling paper company so that's that's what they're doing there um that's kind of their main flagship operations. It's what they're looking to brand themselves on is that kind of joint location um, or the joint uh, the joint platform. And that's what they're going to look to sell product through and to market their product. Well, can't open either of these. I don't know why internet just being silly but either way these are just other companies and brands which they are um, looking to expand into um, I should bring it up just to show you but it won't load obviously so that kind of sucks but anyway um, cannabis one um, one thing I want to talk about is their share price and their stock chart so one of the reasons why I wanted to bring up cannabis one is when you look at their stock chart and when you look at their recent history, I mean, it's obvious the stock's been performing very badly along with almost every other stock in the cannabis section. But this one has been down significantly more than a lot of other companies. And this some pe might scare some people, but to me, it, it presents almost a, you know, a very, very good buying opportunity because when you see a stock like this and I, I've been watching it for the last week or so you know and I saw it hit like a low of 61 and I was thinking to myself yeah I should buy here because if you look at the five-year chart or I should say the yearly chart um, you know we got to kind of almost go more than the yearly chart here in between the year and the max you can see that you know you've had a low of 61 cents that's the low that's the yearly low the 52 week low um, is at 61 62 cents so there seems to be a lot of resistance level when you hit the 61 62 cents so you can definitely treat that as a buying opportunity and a place where you should target your entry is closer to 60 cents and almost the day after I was looking at this and I thought maybe I should buy at 61 it jumped up to 90 cents the next day so that would be almost a 45 50 percent increase if you were to get in at 60 would have been almost a 50% increase to 91. Um, say you're in a thousand, you make 500 bucks quick in a, in a week and you're out, or in a few days and you're out. 
So that's the way you should target this stock. I don't know if you should be holding it long term. Obviously, if the U.S. legalizes, there's a lot more potential here. So let's go on to our second company, uh, MedMen. And one thing I want to mention is a lot of these companies I'm going to do probably videos uh, on their own. So don't think that this is going to be my full examination of these companies. I simply just wanted to do a, a, a July 4th uh, stock pick where I could give you a view into the U.S. cannabis market and a look at some of the leading companies or at least the ones that I have been keeping my eye on. So MedMen, I would say, is the, the, the biggest company in the U.S. They have the largest production base and they have probably the, the biggest name. Um, they are putting themselves in a position to be the largest and the most well-branded company in the U.S., so they currently have a presence in 12 states. They have 37 retail locations with 86 retail licenses. That means they can open up another 50 stores with 2 million plus retail transactions since 2018. So in a year, they've had made a, over 2 million transactions. So the big thing to understand here is that <clears throat> all of these are in prime locations like Las Vegas, like New York, like Los Angeles. A lot of these are in prime real estate locations. They're the first movers. Florida is another big one. Also states in the Northwest, like Oregon and Washington, I've also given them good uh, locations. So their retail locations are some of the best and they have some of the largest profit margins and their stores have been called the Am or sorry the apple of the cannabis world because their stores seek to present a very uh, approachable business it's not supposed to be like full of hippies and and guys with dreadlocks it's, it's very professional you go in you wouldn't even you know you would think it was an apple store but it's a cannabis store so it's extremely low key it's meant to be subtle you wouldn't even know it was a cannabis store unless you were actually in there and old enough to purchase. You would never even know. So this is their main goal and what they're trying to do. And they've been pretty successful. As you can see, $37 million in Q3 revenue 2019, 22% uh, sequential revenue growth. Uh, they're outperforming average California dispensary by eight times. And this just shows their retail locations, their prime real estate locations that they're getting have been paying dividends. To the company so as you say that they're focused on branded retail so building a national retailer for the modern cannabis consumer so it's just all about retail locations that are well established and that are very universal that can be transplanted to any state but that all have the same core value and brand and the way in which they approach the market so like I said they have the first mover advantages that's why they have so the stores in some of the best markets, some of the best retail locations. They are launching delivery, loyalty, and targeted CPG brands. So this means that they are offering not just retail in-store pickup, but also delivery services and loyalty programs for people that shop with them. So this just creates you know consistent customer a consistent consumer base and as you see their stores here in Beverly Hills in Venice Beach downtown Los Angeles New York Las Vegas right on Paradise right on the strip West Palm Beach you can see it's a very 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 well um, well branded it's very very visible it's also very very stylish it's a good brand name and they have been able to execute on that plan and as you can see by their numbers they are extremely focused on being profitable and they've been able to beat almost every single cannabis retailer in their vicinity or in the in the same markets that they've been which are the only markets that are available as of yet but they have been able to outperform every other company so like I said I want to do a video probably for them on their own so don't think this is going to be a full presentation I just wanted to give you a quick look into what is happening here in Med with MedMen and why I think uh, we should take a look at them if we look at their share price 
Uh, like all cannabis companies, they have been taking a hit recently, but you can see they've rallied back pretty nicely. Um, back from 250, they rallied to 350, and now they're kind of sitting around there. If we look at the kind of year um, yearly chart, you know, they were almost trading at nine dollars at one point. So this is 300 percent um, increase. So the 52-week high and the 52-week low, you can see the 52-week low was around 250, where it was at about a month ago. So these are companies you want to keep an eye on and understand that these are very, uh, very big risk investments because it's all about U.S. legalization. It's all about if U.S. legalizes, these stocks will explode, and this nine dollars will be the floor, and that will then you will see the stock explode. But we need federal legalization, not just state legalization. These are big, big differences. So the last company, though, I want to talk about real quick is 1933 Industries. It used to be called TGIF, um, or sorry, it used to uh, used to be called uh, Friday Night Lights. Uh, then now it's 1933 Industries. Uh, ticker symbol is TGIF. Um, so one thing to understand about 1933 is they're solely focused in Las Vegas currently. They are trying to expand but their main focus is in Las Vegas and in uh, the Northwest as well so in Washington and in the newly federalized states of Chicago um, Illinois they are looking to expand into Illinois as well but currently they are fo focusing most of their time and energy into Las Vegas so just quickly looking at where their main focus is we can see that okay so they're like I said they're in the Northwest they're in California as well Colorado Arizona complete Las Vegas expansion with construction cultivation facility production building and CBD extraction lab so I guess they're based in Las Vegas, but they're mainly selling to Washington, Oregon, California, Arizona, and Colorado, and they're completing their Las Vegas expansion facility so they can have uh, a full production and CBD extraction uh, lab. So that, like I said, they're the first licensed cultivator in Las Vegas, and this is one of the big things, gives them a big, big um, advantage. Like I was saying, they're, they're really focusing on the Nevada market but they are branching out as you see here they are looking in the Canadian markets and along the whole west coast Arizona and Colorado as well they're really trying to focus on CBD extraction and, and hot high CBD um, and hemp derived products so they're moving from 12,000 square foot capacity to a 67,750 square foot cultivation facility so this gives them six times the production that they currently are, are at and as you can see they've been growing their revenue exponentially every quarter so by as if this just keeps going up going up they'll be at 10 million in the next two or three years and this should be very well um, to be able to reach their profit margin but like I said they're not even fully operational yet a lot of these companies are still they're still in in the building stages they're still in the cultivation stages they're still not at the full production or full operational optimized capacity so you need to be patient with all of these companies and realize that they are getting themselves in the right position and once they have all the laws implemented and once they are able to fully gain access to capital resources which they're currently denied because of the federal legalization in the United States you'll see that they have the ability to explode and these are you can see the corrupt moon rocks so these are corrupt the uh, wrapper um, and a lot of these are connections and just brandings trying to be um, hip or brand themselves as something with something with kind of very stylish names and trendy names and moon rocks is a very trendy thing so they're focusing on these these markets to draw people in and then obviously the product will be top quality so that's what will keep them once they've been drawn in from the branding so that's 
that's like one of the you know big things I just wanted to mention. It's not really. I don't think that a lot of these companies are ones you should be investing in today unless you see the right opportunity, unless you're able to find a good entry. Like I said, look for the 52 week low. If, if it breaches the 52 week low, wait till it finds a bottom and then look to en enter there. A lot of these products are very, very, very uh, good products and they are universally uh, reviewed as being some of the best in the industry. So a lot of these CBD sprays and gels and uh, hair products and body solutions and even their pet products have been some of the leading products in a lot of the uh, a lot of the different expos and ways of promoting their products when they go to different uh, galleries or different uh, expos there they have the best consumer ratings so that bodes well for their products that people are coming back and people are saying that their products are good so this is a good thing like i said their their las vegas facility is still in construction so we're going to have to wait to get updates on that till they get up to full production capacity and as you can see their stock price is sitting at 41 cents so it's a relatively cheap stock compared to a lot of the other cannabis stocks uh it's been relatively, you know, it's down about 50%, a um, little more than that from the high, from the 52 week high. It's not currently at the 52 week low. Well, actually, it, so it is, it is a little bit above the 52 week low. So the 52 week low will be 31 cents. So if it drops back down below 40 cents, you should look maybe to enter and catch a scalp back up to, you know, 55, 60 cents. And that will uh, that'll give you some nice profit, you know. It's a company that I don't think should be valued much lower than that. But like I said, it's all about entry. It's all about time. It's all about legalization. It's all about the law, whether full legalization comes and we're able to see a shift in policy. And a lot of these companies can start getting capital. Banks can start backing them, start getting them you know, millions of dollars in investments and they can start using that to expand and consolidate, then you're going to see these stocks explode and just picking the right ones or being able to get in them early will give you a first kind of mover advantage. And a lot of the good, the good thing about a lot of these companies is that a lot of them, even if they're not that great, they'll still, stock prices will still explode if legalization is to occur so that's just something to keep in mind but again be very risky or be very cautious there's a lot of risk in these trades there's a lot of risk in cannabis stocks uh, volatility is good that's where we make money but can also be very bad because it can leave you in a position where you buy too high and you get caught in a kind of dip and if the market doesn't do well well then you're gonna have to wait and a lot of times you shouldn't be investing with money you can't wait you know a year or two years or three years to get out anyway so just keep that in mind these are long-term investments many of them but you can still make money in the short term but you need to be able to recognize where the lows are and where you need to be targeting your entries and that will lead you to be more profitable and in the end will make you a successful investor so that's all I wanted to talk to you today guys about happy 4th of July to all the US people in the US out there I uh, also, happy Canada Day. I haven't done a video since then, so happy Canada Day to all my Canadians. Uh, hopefully, this video helped you. If you have any questions, and I'm probably, gonna, like I said, I'm probably going to do video of each one of these companies on their own, but I just wanted to bring you a quick 4th of July special and highlight these companies, and maybe, you know, if you haven't got them on your radar, you should, uh, you should put them there and keep an eye on them because they might be very, very explosive in the future. All right. Have a good day, guys.